Injection molding is often deemed way too expensive for most makers, entrepreneurs, or designers. But what if I told you with 3D printed molds and a small desktop injection machine, we can drastically reduce these costs, allowing you to create reliable prototypes, recycle plastic, and even mass produce products at a fraction of the normal price. Injection molding normally requires two things, an injection molder and a mold. Despite being a fast and efficient way to create duplicate parts, it falls short when you take into account the high upfront mold costs, long lead times of machining, and limited access for small scale creators. Sure, traditional CNC molds made of aluminium or steel are built to last and handle industrial level workloads. But what if instead of producing several million items in a factory on the other side of the world, you are only looking to make a few hundred in a garage. That's where 3D printed molds really excel. With 3D printing, anyone from hobbyist to small business can create molds in hours, not weeks, using off the shelf machines resulting in a fully functional mold for as little as 30 pounds. Now that you know why 3D printing molds are a game changer, let's get into the how. I'll walk you through the two different 3D printing methods, FDM, and SLA resin printing. Each has its strengths and weaknesses, and I'll break down exactly what you need to know to get started. First up, we've got FDM printing, arguably the most accessible and beginner-friendly method. If you've dabbled in 3D printing before, chances are you've used an FDM printer. For this video, I'll be using our Bamboo X1 Carbon, but don't worry, similar printers with a heated enclosure a high temperature hot end and a flexible build plate can do the job just as well. The filament is almost more important than the 3D printer. For injection molding, we need a material that can handle the high temperature of molten plastic that we'll be injecting. Enter Prusament PC Blend, a polycarbonate filament that prints at 275 degrees Celsius, giving us plenty of headroom for our injecting process and ensuring the mold stays intact under the high temperatures and pressures of injection molding. When you're designing and printing your mold, there are a few key settings you want to get just right to ensure the best results. First up is wall thickness. Make sure that your top layer of your mold is at least five millimeters thick. This extra thickness help prevents the mold from deforming under the pressure of the injection process, keeping everything solid and reliable. Next, we need to focus on the infill. For injection molds, you'll need more structural support than normal, so go for a higher infill. Around 30% works great. This adds the strength your mold needs to handle the demands of the injection molding process. And finally, layer height. Always print at the highest resolution your printer can manage. This reduces layer lines and gives you smoother surfaces, which means better quality in your final product. While FDM printing is incredibly accessible and cost-effective, it does have its limitations. One of the biggest challenges with FDM molds is layer lines. No matter how fine your printer's resolution, those lines can show up in your finished product, especially on smooth surfaces. Additionally, while materials like polycarbonate can handle the heat, FDM molds may still struggle with higher injection temperatures over extended use. This is where SLA printing steps in as a strong alternative. By using UV cured liquid resin, SLA offers near invisible layers and a surface finish that's incredibly smooth, perfect for detailed or professional grade molds. Again, we're using a standard off the shelf SLA printer. For us, it's the Elegoo Saturn. However, picking the right resin is crucial. After some testing, Frozen's TR300 high temperature resin was our top pick. It stays solid under the heat and pressure of molten plastic, making it ideal for mold making. Just like with FDM, getting your settings right for SLA molds is absolutely critical to success. There are three key things we want you to focus on. First, hollow out the mold. Aim for two to three millimeter wall thickness. This not only reduces the amount of resin you will need, saving both time and money, but it also helps prevent warping during the curing process. It's a simple adjustment that makes your mold both efficient and durable. 
Next, add some internal reinforcement. Filling the hollow spaces with a honeycomb structure is a game changer. It keeps the mold lightweight while giving it the strength it needs to handle the high pressures of injection molding without buckling. And finally, optimize your layer heights. Print at the finest resolution your printer allows. This minimizes those pesky layer lines, resulting in a super smooth surface that carries over beautifully into your finished product. By nailing these settings, you're setting yourself up for a durable, high quality SLA mold that delivers excellent results. While both FDM and SLA molds are impressive in their own ways, they often have their limitations when it comes to injection molding. Notably, they can sometimes lack the strength needed to handle repeat high pressure injections. That's why reinforcing the mold with an outer housing is essential in extending their lifespan and protects them from direct contact with the hot injection nozzle. With our molds designed, printed and reinforced, we're ready to move on to the most exciting step, turning those molds into actual products. For this process, we're using the Injection Mini, a compact desktop machine designed specifically for recycled materials that's affordable, easy to use, and perfect for small scale projects like these. Its enclosed design and customizable settings make it especially well suited for working with 3D printed molds where precision and control are key. When injecting, we need to inject at the lowest temperature possible to avoid warp or even melting our 3D printed part, while also injecting at the lowest possible pressure setting to avoid cracking or permanently damaging the mold. Through a bit of trial and error, we can find the perfect balance, and once we've dialed in the settings, the Injection Mini lets us lock in those for consistent repeatable results. It's also important to highlight we've only used recycled plastic to create our products in all of these examples. Most have been created using recycled DVD cases. However, we have also had success with recycled bottle caps and even old 3D prints. When we compare the products side by side, the results are impressive. Both look remarkably similar at first glance, but the chest piece from the SLA mold has a noticeably smoother finish thanks to the mold's fine resolution and nearly invisible layer lines. But this chest piece is just the beginning. The possibilities with 3D printed molds are virtually endless. We've also created items like this avocado seed holder, perfect for sprouting plants, and a durable carabiner for your keys. Whether it's functional tools, unique prototypes, or creative designs, these molds open up a world of opportunities. If you're ready to dive in, we've got you covered. We've listed all the materials, tools, and machines used in this video in the description below, along with complete step-by-step -step guides and free downloads of the 3D print files on our website. If you're feeling inspired or have questions, let us know in the comments. We love to hear about your projects, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on sustainable manufacturing. And as always, let's keep connecting the dots between waste and product.